Hello, hello, what's up? How you doing out there? Today's episode from the main event is Kendrick Lamar's Breakdown. A lot of, lot of discussion about this album, so I took it upon myself to do my hip-hop analyst and break his album down. So here we go. First of all, the album's called Mr. Morale, World Big Steppers. It's me, Big Steppers. I found out it's two titles because it's two different albums in one. Did you know that? Fun fact. And at the end, I want to tell you another fun fact at the end of this podcast. So it's great. Let's go straight into it. Song number one, United in Grief, Beach Noise Production. On this one, he found a lot of peace. He's got a lot of stuff on his mind, a lot of anger, a lot of stress. He's going, and he's going through something. But I love it. It's why hip hop is about pain. So about getting a therapist, family dying, what it is. That's a little brief thought on that. The song is nice. You know, beats kind of different. Beach noise did this thing on there. It's just a very complex album. Now, N95 video is out. New single. It's called. And like I said, N95, Boy One Da, production on this one. Now, in the beginning of the song, he says, Take it off. Tell all the celebrities, take your jewelry off, take this off, take that off. So I take it back to a skit on Three, five, three Feet Rising Highs by De La Soul. They had a skit called Take It Off. History repeats itself. It's nothing new under the sun. Now, if you don't believe me, go check that album out. And you hear the Take It Off finale on Kim's Mom's album. Now, right now, besides that, that beat is dark, a lot of anger, a little auto tune, something for the like something for the kids for right now. The video is crazy. Kendra Ball is out there. N95, production by like, once again, boy, one dot. Check that one out. Now, worldwide steppers. JLBS production. Different styles throughout the whole song. He's speaking family again, the truth. He's speaking about changing his lifestyle, and he's talking about having sex with a white girl for the first time. When I heard that line, I'm like, wow, he bring up memories when I was young. I remember I had sex with a white girl for the first time. Yikes. It's like, he bringing back memories right there. He's doing his thing, bringing out old, old stories about having sex with white girls on tour. When he's 16, 17, changing it up. Jungle Fever, all up in there. But the way the beat changes throughout that song, crazy. And in the background, if you listen real closely, when the beat changes on the second time, you hear what the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck. Look out for that in the background when you hear that song. Raw, wide steppers. Crazy. Beat is crazy right there. Beat change. Talking about how, how, helping out his community. He's doing a lot of things on the album. Excuse me, on this song. Check that out. Die Hard. Again, DJ Daha. I think this will be the first club banger. Played in the club, I can hear it. The, the energy. Another song for the radio. I could be wrong, but that's my personal opinion. This song got that club feel, that, that you rock it. I could be wrong, though. You never know. Check out for that, Die Hard. I'm predicting that might be a single for the club or another single off the album. Now, Father Time, featuring Sampa. Beach Noise, once again, perfect beat. Going through daddy issues, spilling his soul on this one. Spilling nothing but bars, crazy bars on this one. Fuck everybody. He's getting deep once again. He's breaking shit down to the fullest on this song. I, I love this beat. One of my favorite beats on the album. Now the interlude, Rich. Interlude, Lost Souls, Pain. Crazy pianos in the background. Listen to the pianos in the background. That boy went off. Timmy Devolve sampled this one also. Next one, Rich Spirit. DJ Daha again. Daddy Duties. Take, he taking chances on this one. He's switching his styles up again. Take a lot of change. Very abstract, I notice. Take a chance to switch the style up. A little up a little up tempo style. Still talk about his family. Talking about how his cousin trying to sue him, which is crazy. Your family trying to get at you. So on this one, crazy. Crazy. The beats, like I said, I got you at the end. And I break my whole summary down. Now the next one, we cry together. B Con, J L B S, and Al Alchemist all produced this track. Yes. Three producers on one track. Very different. Now, we cry together. If you heard Rizzo's Domestic Violence, if you heard Poison Clans, The Bitch You're Gonna Hate, 
If you heard Snoop Dogg's Bitches Ain't Shit, if you heard Ice Cube, Bitches a Bitch, this song, they can't compare to this because this song right here is beyond crazy. Beyond crazy. It takes, like I said, the original song when he's like, fuck you, bitch, to a whole nother level. Him and his baby moms or girlfriend, whoever it is, are going at it, saying disrespectful things, feelings is ruthless on this, cold hearted. They going at it, spazzing on each other. Very personal. Love is deep. But on this shit, way at the end of the song, what happens? They have sex. Go figure that. That song is motherfucking crazy. We cry together. God damn. Check that shit out. Check that shit out. Fucking crazy. Now, Purple Hearts. Beach Noise again. JBLS. Delay, D DJ Cali. Ghostface Killers on this album. Featuring Summer Walker, excuse me, on this song. Summer Walker, Ghostface. Killed it. Nice hook. Shut the fuck up. For, for grown folks on here. Listen to the hook. Shut the fuck up. Classic. I like that shit. Joy Face kills it. Good feature. Summer Walker. Up and come up. The scene up and coming. She been here, but she's doing her thing again on this. Count me out. Once again, DJ Daha and JLBS. The hook. The hook is off the hook. Different flow, a complex song. If you're looking at, listen to the background, the background is crazy. Very good track, abstract. To me, the whole abstract, the album is the abstract thing on this. Don't count me out. Don't count nobody out. Next song, Crown. It's a message on this. Deval Timmy, production. Good title for a song. Like I said, at the end of the day, this man is an artist. He's an artist. He's taking a lot of chances. A lot of people don't like this album. A lot of people say the album is trash. A lot of people say this shit was doo-doo. But to me, it's a good album. I'll do that at the end of the breakdown. But he's an artist at the end of the day. He takes a lot of chances on this. And he said you can't please everybody. You can't please everybody. Piano is crazy. Or this, he's not even rhyming that much. He's talking. He's talking. If you remember, he's talking. He spoke a lot of spoke word on this. Not rhyming too much. But like I said, like I said, you can't please everybody. Silent Hill. Dark beat. Beach noise again. Sound wave. The song is just crazy. Shit talking, flossing, talking about partying. You know, what rappers do, what MCs do. Doing his thing. At the end of the day, he has a feature by Kodak Black. I don't mess with Kodak Black too much, but I like his verse on here. Helps me get in tune with, with the new generation. Thank you. Thank you for that, Lamar. It's crazy. Now, Savior. More pain, interlude. More fucking pain. JLBS, Oklahoma. Sound wave again on this. Do you hear the violin in the background? Do you hear the violins on that? Crazy. Old boy went in. He got one chance to shine, and he shined on that track. Whoever was spitting, he did his thing. Now let's go to Savior the Song. Cardio, JLBS, Mario Luciani. All produced this track. More spoken word. Party song. And the, the, the part I love on this song, are you happy for me? Are you fucking happy for me? Are you happy for me? A lot of bitch saying it in the song. He used that word a lot, something like too short. Are you happy for me? Bitch, are you happy for me? Crazy. Crazy. Next song, Auntie Diaries. Oh my God. Beach Noise once again. B. Kwan, Tyler, and, and, and my man Craig all produced this track. Yikes. All I gotta say is yikes. He's getting real personal to how his aunt being a lesbian turned into a man. How family was jealous of his uncle, family of his aunt, bagging more chicks than him. How his aunt turned into a man at the, at the end of the day. He's, like I said, real personal on this album. He's get, he's going in. Now listen to the song. Very good story. Very good story he's talking about. The truth is on that. Now, Mr. Morrell, who was produced by Pharrell Williams. Did his thing. The beat is crazy. I love the intro, how it comes in. Come on. Demons is on this thing. He's playing a lot of demons. Pharrell, once again, fire beat. He's going in on this one. Expressing himself a lot. A lot of deep feelings on this track. Like the whole album basically is. Now, Mirror. DJ Daha again, producing it. More spoken word. Poetry, spitting knowledge through the whole album. Check that out. Now, at the end of the day, my overall summary of this album, if it was five mics, I would give 4.5. I'll give it eight out of 10. No Dre beats. Did you know that? No Dre beats on here. My, my three favorite songs on this album, 
Cry Together, Worldwide Steppers, and Mr. Morale. Took a lot of chances on this album. Took a lot of chances. Now, real quick, there's one song I didn't mention that's not on the album. Heartbreak Part 5 is not on this album. What artist drops a single? Seriously, what artist drops a single? Makes a video, and that song's not on the album. I gotta look, I gotta go back to the track. I never saw nobody put a single out and that single's not on the album. Usually a lead single is on the album. That song is not on the album. But it's alright though. I think it's a good album. The five year wait, a lot of change, a lot of change in five years, a lot of deaths in hip hop, pandemic. Just in general, at least over 200 records dropped, maybe more than that, in that five year span. Rap has changed a little bit, drill music took over. Kendrick Lamar came back. It was worth the wait to me. The man spits bars. Some songs he's not even rhyming, but he's just talking. He took a lot of chances, like I said. On this one, a little bit, he reminded me of Andre 3000 on A Love Below. I'm just saying in general. Now, a lot of people I see on social media uh, destroying this track, I mean, excuse me, this album, saying it's trash. It's boring. I skipped through it. How you gonna skip through the album? How you gonna skip through the album? So this is my first album review podcast. Hip hop analyst breaking it down main event. To me, this is a very good album. It's a mature album for, for grown folks. If you're at like 25 and under, you might not understand this album. If you're an old person, you might understand that one. You might just be too slow. I'm just saying in general. But I bet you after this podcast, you will go back and listen to all them songs and the album a little differently. I broke the songs down. I broke everything down to the T to my best ability. Coming soon, I'm gonna break more people's albums down. But the reason why I focus on Kendrick, because it's five years since he's been out. Five years. That's power in the mathematics. Five years. But I'm like, I got to I have to do this. I have to do it for the culture. So my whole overall, he went in, took a lot of chances. A lot of chances on this album. Very abstract. A lot of dark paint on this. Now, on this one, he broke down. Homophobia, daddy issues, family issues, racial issues. Just in general, a lot, a lot of different things on this album. You have to just really listen to what he's talking about. Poetry. If you love poetry, it's on here. Spoken word, all that is on this album. Now, people thought he was going to come back with a super album, bars crazy everywhere. And I don't know what people are expecting. That's why I love social media. I love the Facebook groups I'm in. I love all the debates. That's what we're here for. That's what I'm here for. That's what you're in for. You say, yo, I want to hear this man's podcast. He says he's going to make a podcast about Kendrick Lamar's album. I want to hear it. Well, here it is. So give me your feedback. Leave your comments, please, so we can debate about this man's album. I think it's a good album. Two titles on one. First single, not on the album. Baby Mama Drama, Therapy, Family Trying to Sue You, New Friends, Cutting Off the Circle, Talking About Material Things, Celebrities, How the Industry Could Do You Dirty. All this is in one album. It's only an hour and 13 minutes. So stop saying you skip through somebody's album. Don't do that. Listen to the album. Listen to it. Listen to it carefully. After this podcast, go back and listen to it carefully. Because I'm saying he break down all kind of shit on this album. Like I said, baby mama drama. Baby uh, father duties. Like he, he's going in on this. I love this album. It's, it's on a playlist. It's on my rotation. Now... Like recently, I still have to break down other albums. That's coming soon. But on this one, Mr. Lamar, thanks for the album coming out. It's worth the five year wait. Like I said, real quick, if it was, a, I'll give it eight out of 10, 4.5, it was five mics. But to me, this album will be getting a lot of, a lot of, a lot of play. Because look, this man already dropped a video. That's not, uh, excuse me, a single that's not on the song with a video. A new video in 95 already. The album ain't been out in two weeks yet. He already got two videos out already. So watch out, more will be coming from this album. You're going to be like, oh shit, he was right. So on that note, I'm going to fade out. Getting you ready for the next podcast. I don't know what it's going to be yet. You just got to wait. So M.E. Dot signing off. Peace to my true hip-hop fans out there. Hip-hop will never die if I'm here. The culture is here for life. Big up to all my true fans, old subscribers, new subscribers. And you're staying tuned with the best podcast never heard. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out. You know, I don't talk too much. But this album is crazy. I got to listen to World, World Side Steppers again. Because that shit is banging. That beat, the way the beat changes up. And at the end, what the fuck? That's my shit right there. So I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace out.